one should go off. Can you follow the fire exit signs which are dotted around the room and assemble at the bottom of the school field next to the Sunshine Preschool? And could I also ask you to turn your mobile phones off, please? Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much for coming. Right, uh, my name's uh, Bridget Smith. I'm one of the two district councillors for Gammon Gay. Sebastian Kindersley is my colleague and he's also the county councillor. Um, I've lived in the village for over 30 years. My youngest son was a pupil here and I used to teach at GVC quite a long time ago. Um, and actually, I may well have taught some of you here. Um, so if I have, you'll recall that my reputation was for strict but fair and that's how I intend to conduct this meeting this afternoon and the meeting that follows on this evening. Now it's obvious, um, just to sort of set some sort of house rules to start with, um, we don't all hold the same opinions here and I realise we're going to be discussing issues which many people feel very passionately about. So I hope that we don't need to be reminded that we're in a school and that the only thing I ask is that we conduct ourselves in the way we'd expect our children to behave in these premises and that we treat each other and each other's views with respect. Um, I'm sure it won't come to it, but if we can't manage to do that, then I will we'll have to close the meeting. But hopefully, I'm sure, the case. So if I could just introduce the people here who are going to be answering your questions. Um, we have Mr. Stephen Munday, who is the Executive Principal of Combaton Village College and the Chief Executive of Combaton Multi Academy Trust. Uh, we have Mr. Russell Gray, who is the Chair of the Governing Body at uh, Gamgay Village, um, sorry, Gamgay, <laughs> Freudian slip, Gamgay First School, and Mrs. Shelley Desborough, who is your new Principal Teacher here. Now the reason I'm chairing this meeting was that I was invited some time ago by the governing body to chair the working party which has been steering this consultation. The reason the governors wanted an outsider involved was to introduce some extra transparency and challenge to the process. I'm an associate member for the duration of this process but I don't have any voting rights on the governing body. This meeting has been called as part of the statutory consultation process required to become an academy and it's to allow you as parents and carers to ask questions about issues which you feel have not been adequately addressed through the consultation documentation which I know you've all, all had. We have limited time as there's a meeting for staff at five o'clock so we, you know, we will have to crack on. I'm going to ask you to restrict yourselves initially to one succinct question rather than long statements and debate and if time allows then we'll be able to go around again and, and allow you to ask a secondary question. I've got quite a lot of pre-submitted questions which I will ask at intervals if I feel those things are not being covered by the questions coming back from the floor. If you'd be kind enough to raise your hand if you want to ask a question, um, and I'll do my best to get round for everybody, if you would stand to ask your question, and then I will put your question, I'll repeat it and put it to the person who's best placed to respond to it. Um, I'd also ask you to appreciate that we're probably not in a position to answer questions on behalf of Gamgay Village College and Stratton Educational Trust. Having said that, both myself and Mrs. De Desborough met with the head last week, the new, the new head, um, James Burkett, at the Village College, um, to discuss how you know, we deal with these things. And he has uh, suggested that questions specifically about SET and about GVC need to be directed to his governing board. So Mr. Gray is going to say just a few words about the consultation process, and then Mr. Monday is going to talk about Competent Multi Academy Trust, and then we'll move on to the questions. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Um, as uh, Bridget has just mentioned, I'm the chair of governors, a new chair of governors here at the first school. Um, I represent all of the governors uh, at the school, and of course, we represent the children of the first school um, as our primary concern, uh, ensuring that uh, their education is of the right standard, as an improved standard, uh, and that the resources are spent correctly um, and efficiently. Um, over the last few years, um, the parents of children in the school and beyond have had many conversations with uh, our former head, Mr. Newman, uh, regarding their concerns over the uh, educational path that children may take, um, not only during, uh, during GFS uh, education, but also after that point. Uh, there are many different schools uh, in the locality, and many children go to different ones, uh, as is the choice of the parents. Um, the reason we have got these proposals in front of uh, the parents this time is because uh, 
the numbers of children uh, attending the school has been dropping, which of course also causes a, a drop in resources. Uh, and as classes shrink and schools shrink, it's very hard to retain educational standards. Um, one of the reasons that uh, these proposals are there because many parents would prefer to educate their children in the primary secondary system, um, which of course is slightly different to how the existing arrangements in the village are with the three tier system, which we of course know exists in Bedfordshire. Um, the proposal, uh, obviously in two parts, there's the, the, the basic proposal, which is to extend the age uh, of the school to become a primary, so children would leave here at the end of year six. Uh, and the other proposal, which is a statutory proposal, uh, which is to then convert into an academy school, similar to the other school in the village, uh, and to join in with uh, Compton Academy Trust, who are an outstanding school um, and are positioned 11 miles away, which of course we're going to get onto all those little details very soon. I'm not going to say much more because you all to ask lots of questions. Um, I would like to say thank you for your, for your interest and, and the debate that's actually uh, been going on uh, for what now seems, well obviously it's been years actually, um, but uh, let's just hope we can get some answers today uh, and see if we can uh, come to a, a nice calm agreement as to the best thing for our children. Um, Councillor Smith. Thanks, thanks so much. So uh, Ms Manley, if you'd like to um, say a few words about Compton. Yeah, so Yes, yes, ha happily do that. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for an invitation um, to say us a few things. Obviously, in due course, I'll, I'll do my best to answer those questions that I'm in any sort of position uh, to to answer. Um, what I'll try and do briefly is just at least give, give a little overview about Combatant Academy Trust itself. Um, I realise that this is an interesting process as far as there's several things all happening here at once, but one of the things, obviously, is the possibility that Gambling Gate First School, currently a maintained school, might change over to be a so-called academy, as is happening all over the country, and with development of education policy, and then there must be a trust that any academy has to be part of if they want to become an academy. Set up your own individual little trust if you want to do that. Some schools have chosen to do that uh, previously, or you can join a pre-existing trust that might already have some academies in it. Well, that's what the Combatant Academy Trust is, um, and the proposal, uh, I know from the governing body here, is that that would be the preferred route in terms of becoming an academy to join a pre-existing local trust. So, very quickly, a few things about that. The Combatant Academy Trust came into existence early in 2011, um, in the first instance to oversee Combatant Village College when it itself um, <coughs> chose, and governors chose after a consultation process to become an academy, uh, believing that to be uh, the best way forward for uh, the interest of the school and the education of the children therein. Fairly soon after that, uh, the trust was approached and said, would you be prepared to seek to support a school in challenging circumstances um, for the way in uh, Peterborough, as was a national agenda, and still remains something of a national agenda. Um, and after careful reflection, the trustees said, okay, um, we'll, we'll seek to do that. We think that's the right thing to do. Um, so uh, became a so-called multi-academy trust so that more than one academy could exist. Um, and, and that was the arrangement then later in 2011 uh, with uh, the Voyager School, became the Voyager Academy in Peterborough. Since then, two further specific developments have happened. In 2013, the Trust opened a new school. It's one of these so-called free schools, which all it means actually is it's a new academy. It's a fundamental way of opening new schools. In Camborne, Camborne Village College was set up because with the ongoing growth of Camborne, children from Camborne in the first instance were feeding into Combatant Village College, but that was in the long run unsustainable. So a new school needs to be set up and actually the Trust itself put in a proposal. The local authority uh, wrote a letter of support for that because they recognised the need for a new educational facility there. And so in 2013 that happened so that Campbell based children from 2013 onwards, started just with year seven then and it's growing through in Campbell, don't feed into Combatant Village College. That is relevant for another of the uh, proposals that's being mentioned.
connections that, that could be relevant to the school here. Um, and also at the same time, Melbourne Village College, uh, another local village college in Cambridgeshire, uh, requested to join a <coughs> trust and felt that that was a better way of operating than simply trying to be um, a fairly small secondary school on their own. And, and again, trustees and the governing body of Melbourne thought that that was uh, an appropriate uh, way forward. So that, that's where things sit as of today, um, but clearly th there's a proposal for a, a further development uh, with regard to the school here um, that potentially could lead to another academy joining uh, the Combatant Academy Trust. I think a really important point to note about that is that in principle trustees have said that if there were a local primary school that wished to join in part of the local family of schools, that would be good for everyone because bringing primary uh, experience and primary expertise, working with secondary colleagues would take further still some of the benefits of working as a group of schools and academies under one overarching uh, organisation uh, and that's clearly a view they hold so you know there might be a question about well, what's in it for who and what would any pre-existing schools in the trust be interested in a school such as Gamble Gay First School. Well, for sure, you know, a fundamental reason for operating as a group of schools is you know, professional development, sharing of ideas and expertise, and that's more powerful still when you've got more than one phase of education involved, uh, and hence an obvious reason why trustees would look very seriously in an interested way in a request uh, such as this. Um, just a few other bits about the trust itself that, that I hope are, are helpful and relevant. Um, the trust crucially relies on some core values or principles right at the heart of what it does and sees schooling as all about. And quickly, because it matters in a sense, if governors here didn't think these were appropriate principles for a school such as this, it didn't going to work very well. The principles are excellence that we must aim for the very highest of standards um, and nothing else is actually good enough and that is you know, right at the starting point of what all uh, the trustees work and, and overseeing in, in the schools, Combatant Village College and elsewhere is all about. The comprehensive principle, in other words, it's excellence for all. All sorts of pupils are welcome and, and all can thrive. Um, whether the very most able, whether those with very particular special educational needs, whether those with per uh, certain backgrounds out, but it doesn't matter, it's for all. It's also a community principle, you know, the village college principle, we could talk about this, seeking to be rooted in the local community, serve the local community. The partnership principle, always looking to work in partnership with others wherever possible and not just in isolation. And actually an international principle as well because feel that you know, in our world today it's so important to have an international emphasis in education also. Um, so those are five core principles that any academy uh, within the trust should be sharing and, and would see as really fundamental about you know, what is it that, that uh, schools or academies would be aiming for in the trust. Um, just so you know, it's a locally based trust insofar as also the trust still wants local governing bodies with the local head to oversee the local school. Some trusts don't operate like that, they get rather more, we'll run it from the centre, that's not the approach the content thinks, the right thing to do is to have local governing bodies overseeing fundamental governance, a local head. Now the local governing body still has to report certain things into the trust because there are legal responsibility of standards, ultimate financial protocol and oversight and employment that have to be overseen and processes to do with that at trust level so they can't get rid of uh, those responsibilities but it's the local governing body with the local head uh, that are seen as the people best place to do that um, with oversight uh, from the trustees as, as appropriate. Um, and then just a few things that, you know, just, just to point out, this is the sort of thing that is now happening ever more in, in, in the landscape, nationally and indeed locally, and there's numbers of factors that are causing schools to come together in these sort of ways. For example, it's Compton Academy Trust, both because people perhaps need push to do it, because the old structures are disappearing, local authorities are far less resourced and less able to support schools than before. Um, financially, we're all getting constrained and there are big 
big arguments then for working as groups. But there are positive reasons as well, yeah, positively um, financially strong reasons for working together, getting economies of scale, group deals on insurances, um, and licenses and all these sorts of things. But educationally, a lot of arguments about professional development, working with each other, supporting each other uh, in those sorts of ways. And also holding expertise across the trust, both education but also in terms of HR, in terms of finance, in terms of IT management, and the trust holds um, skills and specialist staff in those areas that become available to all academies. So that's sort of the trust, that's the sort of reason why um, schools are seriously thinking about the possibility of joining a trust, and that's particularly this trust. I realise that what I'm not doing there is speaking on the other two issues, which I know is probably where most of the questions will be about, and in this case it's related the proposal to take years five and six, and also the proposal to go through the required consultation for this school of the full primary to join the catchment area of Combleton Village College. The one thing I'll say straight away about that is one of the things I said about setting up a Campbell Village College is relevant to that because obviously those children don't now feed into Combleton Village College which had a capacity to, co to deal with a lot of Campbell children and therefore at the moment there are a lot of out of catchment children who are feeding through into Combleton Village College. You know, the trustees and indeed the governors of Combleton Village College couldn't have even entered into the conversation were it not properly possible to accommodate every single child who might feed through in due course to get a place at Combleton Village College. If that weren't the case, this would not be a sensible conversation we have. But because of what happened with Camborne, that obviously has changed the situation very, very considerably with the numbers in Catchman feeding into Compton Village College because Camborne is not in Compton Village College's Catchman. I hope I haven't gone on too much, but I hope that was relevant for this afternoon. Thank you very much, Mr. Monday. Actually, I'm just going to pick Mr. Monday up um, on the last point he's made from because um, I've got quite a lot of pre-submitted questions about that very issue of capacity. So uh, I've had this a number of this question in a number of different forms. So supposing that uh, you add additional schools into your, into uh, the academy, could there ever be a situation arise whereby, because Gamlinge is so far away, that actually there wouldn't be places for our children because you have added in other schools into your academy? Uh, okay. We're particularly here talking about the issue of the named catchment area, which is to do with admissions policy that every individual school and academy must have, and, and that's the particular issue here. And because the, the, the published admission number at the moment for Combleton Village College is 240, uh, actually governors have been prepared to admit about 250 in a year group, and there's around about 160 up to 170 coming through from named catchment schools. That gives you an idea of the scale. Of this so in current year seven, there's over 70 children who have come in out of catchment because they've exercised choice uh, to do that, and there are spaces available. What we'll be saying is, well, if a catchment school comes in, automatically the catchment school gets precedent over any out of catchment. So, you know, if you're dealing with 40, 50 more children. Actually, there are space for 40, 50 more children. Of course, that would be with, you know, with 100%. Obviously, there are some Catholic children that do attend Compton Village College now, even though it is not in any way part of the uh, current catchment area or, or indeed um, system of, of schooling uh, that, that exists at the moment. But, but there is space. If you're saying, would governors, particularly governors, therefore, of Compton Village College, think about adding yet more schools to the catchment area on top of if there were then a chance that a current catchment school couldn't have all its places uh, honoured? Absolutely not. I mean, you couldn't possibly do that, and the governors would never do that. The only way to think about it is, well, could we expand that admission number? Would that be appropriate or not? And they would reflect carefully on that. That isn't needed for what's proposed here, and they would, it would be unthinkable that given then the relationship that would exist, obviously tied in between the two schools, you've got to be able to say there are spaces for all children in the named catchment schools to attend the named feeder secondary, otherwise it's sort of a meaningless admissions policy. So okay. you know, I hope that's as clear as it can. That's lovely. All right, so if we can start taking some questions from the floor, <coughs> if you'd like to raise your hand. Yes, would you like to stand up? Has the Borough Compton taken into consideration the new Milbrook Meadows estate and the new estate that's going to be built on Green End Industrial Estate? Into their figures. Thank you. So, all right. So uh, this this question refers to the growth that Gamlingay is taking.
thinking. Um, the Green End, there's a planning application coming in for 90 houses at Green End. Um, there's a speculative application in for 30 um, houses down the bottom of Mill Street. Uh, what you do need to realise is that, uh, with my district council hat on, when we take new, new housing, we enter into a legally binded agreement which gives us money under something called a Section 106 agreement, which uh, is to mitigate for the impact on education in particular, <coughs> education and health and various other things, of the extra children. So regarding the application that's in at the moment for 30 houses down Mill Street, they have estimated how many children that will generate in this school, how many children it will generate in the village college, how many children it will generate in the, um, Strat Stratton or other secondary schools. And there, a sum of money is assigned to that, um, you know, so that that money goes to the schools as the destination schools for those children. But the question was specifically, I'm going to put it to you, about whether there's capacity to allow I think, I think, I think the answer is there's some formulas associated with this about the average expectation of the number of secondary age children, then you have to divide that by five in a top tier system for ages 11 to 16 and similarly primary. My understanding of that is that even within uh, the numbers as they exist at the moment, the published num admission number of competent village college, that could be accommodated. Of course, it's an interesting point that should, you know, they could, you might say, well, there might be another development. You might be right. I mean, they could, who, who knows? You know, what was it announced today? Another million homes over the next five years? You know, I'm quite aware of some of that dealing with um, issues at Campbell, obviously, which is uh, on uh, a whole different scale to, to some of the developments here. But even if that were the case, Competent British College did used to admit 300 pupils per year when uh, accommodating Campbell children. So, actually the capacity that exists in the school is beyond the current admission number so even if you know, there was some further development still and we had to start looking so what do we do further down the line still that there is still potential to look at the admission number should that be needed my understanding from the sort of numbers that would feed through from what i understand i mean in some ways councillors and others might need to correct i don't know but that my understanding is even within the admission number as it is stated 